so after discussing this uh, interaction the coupling spin spin coupling interactions we uh, today we are going to discuss this uh, pulse technique which is used in nmr so modern day spectrometers nmr spectrometers are a lot more different than what have been uh, described earlier in in my classes regarding um, we, we often so as i told you initially that it was easier to understand in the uh, the chemical shift scale and everything when you think of a spectrometer which is has a fixed uh, frequency and the magnetic field is varied that was the very uh, beginning at the very beginning the conventional nmr spectrometers were made uh, like that the, that is what we say at field sweep uh, mechanism was there that the magnetic field was uh, tuned to match with uh, to resonate at the same frequency so high field and low field terms this terminology comes from that original the first generation nmr spectrometers but nowadays what we have uh, Mm, the spectrometers are much more advanced in the sense that uh, they can re reduce the time span of data uh, um, acquisition and data analysis both so that is a technique uh, so instead of doing this field sweep and all that scanning thing uh, there is a different way of doing that in which a simple pulse of uh, something is fed into the system the uh, uh, radio frequency pulse a pulse is a mixture of several waves which are superimposed over the other and the duration is limited a few uh, mm, microseconds nanoseconds something like that so uh, the analogy that we can take here is for that something of a vibration of a bell so bell that is uh, so the bell uh, that you very well know uh, you can if you uh, do a continuous variation of a, a speaker a speaker sound uh, at some point if you suppose there is a speaker kept in front of uh, this bell and you gradually change the sound frequency uh, frequency of the sound that is hitting the uh, bell at some point when the frequency of the uh, that sound matches the characteristic frequency of the bell it will start ringing with a particular tone it will start vibrating and you will see see a ring it, it will ring into your ears and something will happen but there will be only one mode at a, at a time that will appear instead if you take a hammer uh, this one and hit it hard all the three it will start vibrating with a um, start vibrating with all the characteristic frequencies that it can have so mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 these are all appear at different frequencies and a combination of this is what we hear when we struck strike it with a hammer okay so we are not having only one type of uh, uh, vibration that is uh, uh, instigated it that is uh, induced in the thing when we strike with hammer it, instead we are having two three different rapidly uh, uh, oscillations that take place in the uh, in the bell and that we hear as one clang the sound of the bell and uh, when we strike with hammer so uh, so that is what uh, uh, so this is this kind of stimulation that we are doing one with the speaker where gradually we are changing without hitting actually hitting the uh, system uh, and in another case we are using the hammer so in the case of hammer you are having all the three modes appearing at once the uh, bell starts ringing 
and you he, uh, the uh, the thing that you hear is a combination of all these three characteristic frequencies for the vibration of in uh, of the bell instead if you are using something else like a speaker as a system it can still happen but you are continuously varying at some point the resonance will occur and it will start with one of the modes so this is the difference the bell's vibration is something that we are going to take as an example when it is hit by hammer you are getting actually a pulse that is a pulse mix of mode one mode three different frequencies like that so this is the analogy that we are going to take forward in the pulse technique hitting of a hammer hitting of a bell with a hammer the hammer acting as a source to induce that uh, vibration that response uh, okay so so that is what we call a non-linear res response uh, uh, and so uh, gradually we'll understand more about it uh, so composed of all the three frequencies that you see um, sorry just wipe print away so so uh, that is what I was telling you that simple hitting with the hammer it will immediately obtain all the three frequencies uh, together as a short pulse tang you hear a sound clang so that is so similar thing that we are going to do here with uh, nmr technique um, so so now what we are going to do is that in this particular NMR thing, we are going to monitor the radiation of nuclear spins that is emitted as they return to equilibrium. This is important after stimulation. So you have stimulated the thing, you have given an input of energy which is absorbed by the nucleus, uh, nucleus and then after that something happens nuclear spins uh, uh, they will try to relax they will like to come back to their original position and in the process they will they will emit emit this radiation and you uh, we you, you can monitor that emitted radiation this is what we do in this technique so um, uh, so this uh, is now the pulse techniques initially uh, so uh, i hope you have also studied ftir the technique in second semester the instrumentation part and you learned the ft uh, the term ft represents fourier transform fourier transformation of the data the uh, you know the pulse that we are using in that case in, that was infrared frequencies pulse of an infrared uh, uh, several frequencies are tried put together as a short uh, uh, for very limited duration short time that was the pulse here also we are using a radio frequency pulse of, of a very short time duration and uh, then to get the data in form of a conventional uh, absorption versus lambda or transmittance absorbance kind of thing you need to have something so signal that uh, to obtain a signal in terms of a frequency domain that is frequency on the x-axis or the c in cm inverse you can write so on x-axis and y shows you the intensity of that signal so that that to get that data you need to do something which we call in maths you need to have a good uh, mathematics developed to extract that valuable data from a change in the pulse profile after it has passed through the sample okay something like this we have to do and for that Fourier transformation is required so FT NMR so uh, definitely whenever you are using pulse technique in NMR you have to do this uh, you need to uh, uh, advanced computational facility to convert that 
uh, raw data of a which is in uh, time domain pulse, pulse uh, through the pulse technique and convert into a typical spectrum that uh, is a frequency domain thing where you have in terms of frequency uh, you for individual frequencies how much is the in signal intensity that you signal strength that you calculate so uh, so this is important here that uh, <clears throat> so multiple pulse ft nmr is the latest technique those the latest in the sense that this is the normal mode of doing acquiring the data where we common now and it's similar to what we uh, do with the hammer blow that we were doing producing uh, all this uh, mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 of vibrations with different frequencies put together and generating a pulse so uh, okay so it is the so we have already discussed the vector model of angular momentum pre previously and we know how it happens uh, now uh, we will just uh, focus a little bit more on this uh, so in fact i have already told you about this that what is the strength of the uh, angular momentum of uh, any uh, nucleus if it is quantum number is i so you know i into i plus one h cross that is your thing uh, units so you can always define and the component along z axis is given by the mi so s and ms remember that we used for electrons the similar thing mi and mi that's what we are getting and uh, a typical if i try to typical picture it is here yes you can see this yeah so this is uh, if you like to understand it, it this way so this is your z axis z axis is here and this one is your the vector the angular momentum vector for the nuclear spin and this has a magnitude if you put the value as i is equal to half as happens for proton then it is a for the spin half nuclei it is half root 3 into h cross okay and the z component is represented here you can see this plus half so z component is here so anywhere on the cone you have uh, this this is the spin angular momentum and this is the plus half uh, h cross that is the value of your thing uh, and it makes an angle of so it is possible to calculate what angle it makes the cone angle that you are seeing is uh, comes out to be 55 degrees that's simple mathematics uh, you can find out and so we we already know about it the alpha we call it the alpha if the component z component is positive plus half we call it alpha uh, spin and beta spin is for the other hand minus half. so lying at random position so the spin angular momentum can occupy any random position on the cone that is represented here mm. Mm, so yeah so this one is the so net magnetization that we are going to so we are going to uh, in fact in solid state chemistry i have talked about this term magnetization represented by capital m so uh, that will be important here so far we were discussing uh, the spin as individual uh, thing so it is the sum of all the individual magnetic momenta that is present in the sample right the magnetization capital m so sum it over the sample take all the spin angular momenta of the nuclei present in the sample so if you are taking one gram of sample so all the atoms present calculate all uh, measure all these angular momenta to put together divided by volume or mass so that total magnetic moment per unit of mass 
or per unit volume is the your magnetization m capital m so that is what we know already so this uh, magnetization m so now what what this picture tells you randomly if you are, if you are looking at normal situation the picture look at this the left panel uh, where the sample is just kept like it is under normal circumstances at room temperature nothing uh, uh, so this is uh, under normal circumstances this is the situation the alpha and beta look at this so total number of spins so in absence of any magnetic field in so this is in uh, absence of magnetic field external magnetic field is zero that is v naught is zero so the applied magnetic field is zero then the whether it is uh, ms is plus half whether it is ms is equal to minus half alpha or beta they have uh, same energy as we have discussed previously so it is so it is equally probable that half of the spins uh, uh, half of the nuclear spins are in alpha half of this nuclear spins are beta so you represent this so if you are having one two three four five so if you, you have these many uh, nuclei present so here we are showing less number to make it simple keep it simple so you can see one two three four five six one two three four five six so there are equal number of uh, alpha spins and beta spins okay and when there is no magnetic field present now suppose you apply a magnetic field b naught in the second case you apply a magnetic field b naught in this direction Okay, so when you apply this magnetic field, most of the spin will be now uh, like appearing like this alpha. So magnetization direction of th of the nuclear spin would be like this. They will be aligned with the field, and so the population of alpha state, alpha spin state is more. So or in in the first in, so in presence. So this is. In presence of the magnetic field, of magnetic field, this is what happens. And overall, you have a magnet. So, if you sum all these arrows, small uh, arrows, you get this one, the big arrow, which is represented by M. So, this is capital M is the net magnetization. When you sum all these things, beta, alpha, so net magnetization is pointing upwards along the z-axis, which is also the direction of the applied magnetic field. And this magnetization vector m now starts precessing, precessing around the this uh, applied magnetic field. So this is the precession. So you can think of precession of individual magnetic moment of each of the nuclei and the summation of this is the magnetization vector which is a big arrow shown here over here and it will be in precession it will precessional motion that is it will be moving along that cone it will be moving along that cone previously mind it previously in absence of magnetic field it was not moving around the cone it was just located there there was no net magnetization in the absence of magnetic field, no, or you can simply say net magnet, uh, no net magnetization was there. In absence of so here capital M um, was zero. Here capital M is finite, and this frequency at which th they uh, ro rotate around the applied magnetic field that is mu l larmer fre frequency you know about it so you, you, i have also shown you the animation previous classes so you, you are aware of it i'm not repeating it again so uh, so what will happen in this case what we will do we'll 
apply a radio frequency source that is circularly polarized. So first we apply a V0 which is the static magnetic field. V0 is a static, it is static magnetic field. I mean the not oscillating, it is constant. Okay. And then after this, we once we uh, this is set into a precision, the magnetization, there is a net magnetization. The alpha spin state has greater population. Uh, so what we see here, alpha spin state is more populated. Here they were both equal. Equally population populated. Equally populated. This was the case in in here previously without the thing. Now there is uh, you can see alpha is more, beta is less in number, and magnetization vector lying along this in the along the z-axis. Uh, so now if we suppose let me tell you what we are going to do um so so um <coughs> so we apply radio frequency the radio frequency here the catch word is that it is circularly polarized let me go back to the circularly polarized thing yeah so what is circularly polarized uh, radio frequency. So it is looked like this. So this is the direction of propagation. You can see the light is moving in this direction. The uh, electromagnetic wave is moving in this direction and in the perpendicular plane. So if this is your, uh, if this is x, this is y, this is z, z direction. So something like this is there so in the z direction the, it is moving and in the perpendicular plane you have the oscillations of the electric field, magnetic field vector is this black arrows small arrows which are perpendicular are uh, in the circle in a circular frame you can see it is always there so this is circularly polarized uh, circularly polarized uh, radio frequency the electromagnetic wave is circularly polarized that is it is the component if the radiation is traveling in z direction the 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 magnetic field vectors are contained they are restricted in the xy plane they are rotating in the xy plane around this z direction okay in this manner so this is that so you are sitting on this circle and so the view is that if you put visualize any circle from the center of circle you have directions pointing out in the xy plane and these are all the so we are going to call this as these magnetic field vectors are the b1 vectors so take so for example if i take this central one this is better so ye jo circle dikh raha hai circle hai na so something like this so this is my if from the start, starting point then i can have circularly polarized luminescence so this is my v1 circle okay and it is it is uh, applied so we know uh, if it, so it is uh, the component so the magnetic field component of the electromagnetic field is also it is applied in such a way the direction of the radio frequency is the electromagnetic wave is such that it cons it is also along the z direction so v not applied again in the direction of applied field uh, you keeping the same direction the light so is uh, the radio frequency is allowed to hit the sample in the same direction so you have oscillation of this uh, this thing 
b1 is the oscillating letting magnetic field field and this is mu b is suppose equal to mu l so if i make it in such a way that ab ye jo oscillation ho raha hai is radio frequency mein jo b1 jo magnetic field vector hai uska if it matches with the larmer precessional frequency of the uh, magnetization vector okay you had a magnetization vector which was uh, oscillating due to the applied field b not you have a magnetic field which is uh, in the contained in the within the electromagnetic uh, radiation radio frequency source which is also sir rotating in that direction uh, in the xy plane so coming back to this no not this picture uh, i think we have further we can move ahead um so we have ha huh, like this like this yeah so this b1 that we are now so you have what we have assumed what we have so there is a b not original field applied the magnetization aligns with the b not the magnetization m is aligned uh with the field it starts in, in precessional motion it is moving along this cone so this is the direction of the cone the precessional so it is it is a top circle that defines the motion of the magnetization vector moving at, at a frequency of mu l and you can think of uh, so because we have applied the direction of radio frequency light the radio frequency is uh frequency is also applied in the same direction as the b not and in, in the perpendicular direction in this circle so you have a circle which is perpendicular uh, which is uh, perpendicular to this direction and which contains this b1 uh, sorry this contains from the center of the circle you can think of that this is b1 is the part of uh, magnetic field of field vector of uh, radio frequency radio wave or radio frequency so okay so radio wave that we have applied um, radio frequency or radio wave whichever way you understand it is the same thing radio wave okay so this is the b1 is the magnetic field in the perpendicular plane xy plane so it is in the xy plane this and the motion of uh, plane this circle was is also in the xy plane right so two and both have moving at the same frequency so what will happen if you are so from if you are outside the system from a lab lab from laboratory frame standing outside in the laboratory and these two things are moving they will appear to you as moving but if you suppose you change your reference frame to this rotating frame if you suppose you are sitting over here and this is moving in circles b1 is moving in circles like this consisting in motion like this so from that if you are moving in circles in that is uh, lower circle that we are seeing and it is moving at the same speed as this one which is that is we are talking about the situation where mu is equal to mu l so the in that case what will happen it will appear static from the frame of reference of the uh, this uh, circularly polarized Uh, uh this is, is uh, circularly polarized radio wave if you are looking at from, uh, from the rotating frame which is this xy plane rotating at the same um, frequency same uh, having the same angular frequency you will find that the magnetization vector is static and so the second picture tells you that if it is from the rotate rotating frame so we are stepping on 
change of frames so what we are talking about here reference change of frame of reference to understand it better it is a reference we are moving from laboratory frame frame to a rotating frame so it is like uh, what we are talking about so and then from rot rotating frame the magnetization vector which was which was in precession motion it appears static if the frequency both the frequency so like if you are <coughs> if uh, if you are observe so it is like standing besides uh, if you are standing uh, on the road and a car passes through you it appears as moving at a constant speed okay but if you are also driving a car and observing the other vehicle which is at the same and both are moving at the same speed the other car will appear static it will stationary to you from that frame of reference because you are moving so your frame of reference is your moving car and from that moving car you are observing another car which is also moving at the same speed so to you from that frame of reference it will appear static it is always relative okay so here the same thing applies the, and now think uh, both the cars are moving in circles so with respect to one another it will appear static so that, that's how the situation is here two circles one up above one below that's what we have pictured over here and in you are sitting in the lower circle moving at the same speed observing the magnetization vector moving in the upper upper circle and because you are moving at the same speed in the lower circle as the upper speed as the magnetization will capital m in the upper circle so both from that point of view from the rotating frame it will appear static the stationary the m is stationary from a rotating frame now when you have seen m is stationary from a rotating frame of reference now what will happen there's a so it is b1 this is m so this will so just like you had previously happened so there should be a precession induced due to this b1 there is a magnetization vector and there is a, a magnetic field b1 which we are talking about so it will move along so uh, this magnetization vector now m will move in this circle so this is uh, setting up of another precession around the b1 okay so this is what from a rotating frame m appears static and b1 is perpendicular to it so m starts moving just like you, you had we had seen previously uh, in, in case of b0 a precession was set around the vector b0 so similarly the m will start precessing around the b1 it is so in this particular the second circle that we are drawing over here okay so this is what happens we, when we use a circularly polarized radio frequency field b1 which is having a, a oscillations limited to xy plane this is what is likely to happen we have stepped onto a rotating frame of reference the lower circle that we are viewing the b1 uh, which is containing the b1 vector and with respect to that uh, so b1 is from that reference the b1 is stationary if you are moving is sitting on the same thing magnetization is also m vector is also stationary and then we can think of that this m will start moving along the b1 as well okay so so these two vectors um, 
okay so this second movement that we are talking about so when the mu is equal to mu l the magnetization vector of the sample will start rotating along the direction of the b1 also around the direction sorry not along around the directions just like it will making a cone the tip of the vector will rotate around b1 just as in the previous case we, it was happening so so that is uh, yeah so once this starts happening uh, the strength of the rotating field uh, <coughs> so in the in the case the, in the event when both these are matched together mu l you already know what the larmer frequency is and we are trying to make sure that this frequency these two frequencies are matched in that resonant condition that is a resonant condition okay and you will have a hmm. Under the influence, so there will be another precision that I told you that it is a precision around B1 is also happening ar along this circle in the, because of the induced influence of the second field B1, which is in the part of the radio field, the oscillating radio field. So, this is what is going to happen. So, a visualization of the same thing. So, we are having two things here, precession 1, so let me make it clearer once one more time, apply B0, initially you applied B0, the static, radio, uh, static magnetic field, magnetization, the population changes, alpha is more in number, net magnetization pointing upward, this magnetization vector starts precessing around the B0 vector, along the cone. Similarly, uh, so when we apply this circularly polarized radio wave, it has it has the uh, it contains the field uh, magnetic field vector B one, which is restricted to oscillate in move in circles in this circle. So this is why we call it circularly polarized. So and when this is uh, this mu becomes equal to mu l if we are looking from the so we step onto the reference frame change the reference frame to the rotating here we sit over here uh, on this circle we sit over this circle and uh, try to okay so you are sitting on this circle this is your reference moving along this okay circle at the same speed as the frequency and this frequency is the same so what will appear you will the magnetization will look static the v1 will look static to you because it, you are moving uh, your frame of reference has changed and from that point of view the m should now be affected by the b1 also and it will start a precessional motion along this so first precession mu l which is equal to uh, the uh, depends on the b naught then the that m vector starts moving along this circular path around the b1 and that is given this frequency is given by mu b1 by 2 pi okay so this is the second precession that we can think of this happens so this is a pictorial view of what is happening static magnetic field and this oscillating magnetic field so see the vectors see the picture carefully you need to observe very carefully look at what is happening precession b naught and now comes the radio wave so the same vector is now so green one uh, let me stop this for a moment stop 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 so okay 
समझ पा रहे हो अरे नहीं सो करते सो अगर आप इसको देख रहे हैं ये जो रेड वाला डॉट है सो यू सी हियर इट इज स्टैटिक मैग्नेटिक फील्ड द बी नॉट एंड द मैग्नेटाइजेशन इज वेक्टर कैपिटल एम सो स्टैटिक मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज ब्लू वन ब्लू कलर्ड you this look at this this is the b not and what is this this is m right and then when we start this b m jo hai wo iske around ghum raha hai ab dekhi ab dekhi ruk 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 aur ruk ab ye jo dekh rahe ho na motion ko dhyan se dekhna fir se ek bar जैसे ही ये रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी आया गो बैक गो बैक लेट स्टॉप सो सी नाउ दिस ग्रीन वन ग्रीन वन इज योर बी वन जो मैं अब तक बी वन कह रहा था वो ये द रेडियो ऑसिलेटिंग रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑसिलेटिंग Uh, in the radio you have a radio wave which is circularly polarized and it has a uh, the uh, magnitude of that magnetic field vector is b1 which is fixed uh, uh, rotating in that b1 circular polarized means it is moving in circles in a xy plane okay so the b1 from the rot when we step on to the rotating frame of reference in the in the circle in which b1 is rotating the green one then we realize that that from that reference point uh, the magnetic uh, m is just stationary b1 is stationary and because of this b1 and m interaction the m should precess it should start precessing around the b1 so now when i when i play this video uh, this gif you will see that after the introduction of this green one uh, green thing this will start precessing in around this thing because it is uh, so after this it will start now see in the up and down like this so this is the rf frequency source and this is what happens ठीक है स्टेट यू आर व्यूइंग फ्रॉम अ डिफरेंट फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस दैट्स व्हाई द ग्रीन वन इज स्टैटिक ओके अदरवाइज एज आई टोल्ड यू द बी वन इज मूविंग इन सर्कल ऑसिलेटिंग मैग्नेटिक फील्ड वेक्टर है बट द ऑसिलेशन आर कंटेन विद इन दैट सर्कल एंड वी आर सिटिंग इन दैट सर्कल एंड ऑब्जर्विंग द थिंग्स हैपन सो दैट्स हाउ द इट हैपन्स द प्रिसेशन सो सेकेंड प्रिसेशन दैट यू सॉ so this is what i was saying here uh, when we were talking about this um uh, where was it so precessing precessional uh, thing yeah so when i told you that we are having uh, this b1 and bl and uh, so second precession and then the two are having sorry this goes like this so yeah so the second precession that we talk about in the other direction in this like direction like this this is given by mu b1 by 2 pi theek hai we will continue it tomorrow it is only the starting segment of pulse technique and yeah we will talk about relaxation time